ever wondered how to create those jaw-dropping surreal effects in Photoshop and make your photos stand out? Today, I'm going to show you the magical tool behind those effects and explore all the options available to us within that tool. Hi guys, this is Didi and I'm back with a tutorial video and this will be on the amazing Liquify tool in Photoshop. And for those who are new on this channel, this channel is all about designing in Photoshop and sharing the process with you. And along with that, we explore various tools, techniques and tips and tricks which can improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. The Liquify tool in Photoshop is a powerful feature that allows you to manipulate and distort images with incredible precision. By pushing, pulling, rotating and reshaping specific parts of an image, it enables artists and designers like us to create seamless modifications. It's commonly used for retouching portraits, enhancing and altering facial features, but it can also be used for creating surreal effects. The Liquify tool is essential for achieving professional level edits and creative transformations in digital images. And on top of that, you will be having a really good time using it. So let's quickly go to the screen and get to know it better. Here we have our Photoshop opened, and this is the image I'm going to use today to demonstrate the tool along with another image. And if you used to use those images for your project, you can get the download link in the description. If your image is locked like I have here, we can unlock it by clicking here. We'll start off by converting our image into a smart object. This is perhaps one of the most important step. The liquify tool is basically a filter and that's why it's listed under the filters tab here. And now when we apply it to our image, it will be a smart filter. You might be thinking, what's the difference? We will be achieving the same result, isn't it? We as graphic designers always tend to work non-destructively. What it basically means is we will apply a hell lot of filters and effects onto the image, but we must keep the original image intact so that at any point of time, we can revert back to any stage we want and smart filters allow us to do that. We will have all the freedom to edit the filter we applied and delete it if we want. For applying the liquify filter, we will select the layers and then go to filter and click on liquify. You will notice a very different workspace with different tools and options and we gotta explore them one by one. By default, the forward work tool is active and this might be the one which you will be using almost 90% of the time. And on the right, we have the different options for this tool. We can adjust the size of the brush by pressing the left and right square bracket keys, just as we do in the normal brush tool. And it's the same we can do with the size slider here. Now we'll start using the liquify and using it is pretty simple. Just click and hold and drag as you like. And by the way, we will have these options for all the tools here on the left. Then we have the density sliders, which control the strength of the edge of the brush. If we set it to a lower number, you will notice that the edges are sharp and pointed. And if we increase the value, the effect is curvy and rounded. The default value is 50 and you can set it depending on your preference. Next, we have the pressure slider and it controls the intensity of the brush. This is what we get when the value is at default. And if we lower it down, the effect is less and subtle. You will notice what just happened. When we work near the edges of the image, everything gets dragged along with the image itself. If you want that, it's fine. But if you don't want that to happen, then we have to click on this chat box here, pinned edges, and now you see it's not happening anymore. Before moving on to the next tool, I want to show you this interesting option we have right here. If you don't want any of these and want to start afresh, then you can click on restore all and everything will be gone and we'll be reverted back to where we started. But if we want to keep some of it, then we can use the reconstruct button and we will have this slider. 100 is our current state and now if we slide it towards the left, it's slowly reverting till we reach zero. We can keep it at any state we want. Both these buttons will affect the whole image, but what if we want just to revert a small area on this image, then we have the reconstruct tool here. We'll adjust our brush and then click and drag and the area gets reverted. Moreover, we have another way if we want our image to go back to the original state, we can hold down the Alt or Option key and you will notice that this cancel button is now changed to reset and if we click it, we will be reverted back. If you are finding this video interesting and helpful, then I request you to hit the like button. And if you are interested in similar kind of videos, then subscribe to the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I post a new video. Coming back, next we have the smooth tool, but I will explain it a little later with a different image. Then we have the twirl tool here, 
and as the name suggests it spins the pixels of a particular area we just have to click and bold that's it the more we bold the more it will spin we can adjust all the parameters we have here did you notice one thing it's spinning clockwise if you want it to spin counterclockwise then we have to hold the alt option key and then click and hold and it will spin the other way and the same trick applies to all the tools play with it and practice yourself and when you are done just hit ok and now since it's a smart filter we can turn it on and off delete it if we want or we can double click here to liquify and go back to the liquify workspace and edit it further we have some more tools to explore and for that I'm going to use this image. We have to treat this image as we did earlier and what's that? Turn it into a smart object and then apply the liquify filter. Let's say we want to make her dress flow a little more. We'll zoom in a little and take the forward warp tool. Always make the brush bigger in size than the area you want to liquify and we push it outside like this. Along with the dress we are also pushing the background and it's kind of looking awkward. Don't worry, we will take care of that in a while. Now we can select the smooth tool here, make the brush smaller and click and drag along the edges of the dress to make it look smooth. Similarly, we will do the same on our hair to give it a little more volume. It looks wavy and we don't want that so we will again use the smooth tool like this. Let's see the difference. This is before and this is after. Let's go back to liquify and now we'll take care of the background and for that we'll take the reconstruct tool, make the brush smaller and paint over the background like this. There's a better way of doing that which I will show you a little later. Before that let's go to the next tool on the list and that's puffer tool. It basically pushes the pixel towards the center of the brush area, kind of like being sucked in. We can adjust the rate here to make it how fast or slow we want. And we can also hold the Alt or Option key to make it do the reverse. I'll hit the Restore All and move on to the next tool which is Bloat tool. And it does just the opposite of the Pucker tool, giving it an effect like the area is being filled with air or what. You can use it to enlarge a particular area without going to a plastic surgeon. I think you got what I am trying to say. Then we have the Push Left tool and it does what it says. We'll apply it on the dress again and there's a particular way of using it. If we want to push it from right to left, we have to move the brush vertically in the upward direction. And when we move it downward, it does just the opposite, that is from left to right. But if I tell you, we also got a mask tool in Liquify and that is what our next tool is about. Let's zoom in onto her face and we'll take this freeze mask tool and we'll paint over her face leaving the hairs. We don't have to be too precise for that. What it will do is it will lock or freeze this area and now if we take the forward warp tool and for that matter any tool and apply it on the neighboring areas the pixel under this mask will not be affected and will remain as it is. I think the mask is not properly visible so we'll go here in show mask and change the mask color to red and now it's clearly visible. When you are done you can click here on none. This is very useful for rectifying the background. Let me show you how it can be done. After we have done all the changes to the subject we'll simply mask the subject. If you have masked some extra areas then take the thumb mask tool and erase the mask from those areas. I'm not being very precise here, this is just to give you an idea. It's done and now we take the reconstruct tool, paint on the areas we want to revert to original. After everything is done, we'll hit OK and return to our original canvas and see the difference we just made. We are not yet finished with the liquify filter and we still got some tools and options left which are equally amazing and we are going to cover it in our next video. 
and if you are interested to see some of my creations with the liquify filter then you should watch these videos